Finnovate showcases cutting-edge banking and financial technology through a global conference series featuring short-form demos and thought leadership. Now, the conversation continues on the Finnovate podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Finnovate podcast. Joining me today, we have Kevin Brown, CMO and Head of Corporate Development at Onbe. Kevin, thank you so much for taking the time to connect. Great to be here. So to kick things off, can you take just 60 seconds or so and give us some background on yourself and what Onbe is all about? Sure. Um, So my name is Kevin Brown. I am Chief Marketing Officer and Head of Corporate Development at Onbe. Um, I'll get into the company in a moment. Just by way of background, I am a think at this point, a, a full-fledged um, payments and fintech nerd, uh, been in and around banking, payments, lending almost my entire career. Um, and I've been at Onbi in its various states for a little over six years. So a little bit about Onbi. Um, we are the corporate payouts gateway that manages and modernizes workforce and other recipient payouts for enterprise merchants and brands. Um, How you can think about that, our payouts platform enables clients to outsource their entire business to individual disbursements operations. And what that does is it relieves them of costs, complexity, and risk that comes with um, orchestrating the payments in-house themselves and ultimately for their end recipients, so those consumers and workforces, it allows them to deliver payouts in the choices and the modalities that consumers want to receive them, ultimately making it really uh, instant, convenient, and simple. Yeah, I know it's, it's a really cool platform. And I think one of the questions I'd like to just start with is at a really high level, obviously, there's so many different things that are competing for the bank's attention right now, so many different areas of technology that they need to be looking at. Why is the payments process something that they really need to be focusing on right now? And you know, what opportunities are they potentially missing if they aren't as active in the payments space as they should be? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And you know, look by by way of background, um, so I've I've been in the fintech world for uh, gosh eight nine years, but prior to that, for almost nine years, I, I worked at a very large bank, so I've had the ability to see things from a, a couple different angles, and I think. What we'll probably hear in a recurring theme with this podcast is bringing this back to to consumer or recipient demands. And so um, I look at, if I'm sitting at a bank, where are these key customer moments of truth for your consumers? Um, probably involves onboarding, probably involves the, the ability to, to tra- transact when required, um, payments are definitely part of that, right? When the bank in a variety of use cases, which we can talk about, owes that consumer money and needs to get a payout um, on behalf of them or one of their clients, that's a key moment of truth when you owe someone money. And, and the experience around that um, becomes increasingly important. And experience meaning, is it safe? Is it fast? Is it convenient? Yeah. Well, and I mean, really, you know, having money is one thing, but being able to use that money is obviously the point of it. And this is the critical moment where the rubber meets the road, right? You have the money, you want to actually put it to work, you want to do something, or you you need to collect it from somebody else. These are these crucial moments that can end up defining customer experiences. Can you give us an example of what this can look like when it's done really well? Yeah, sure. I mean, and, and, and if you think about just to set a little bit of context for, for the listeners, like we are broadly sitting here now in 2023, um, right in the midst of this multi-generational shift from paper, so think about checks and cash, to electronic, so analog forms, you can think ACH and the like, to digital, virtual cards, real-time payments, uh, PayPal, Venmo. So as part of this huge, massive shift in these conversions, Right now, we're at a we're at this time period where the expectations of what previously was fine to receive a paper check in the mail, maybe go to a bank branch, deposit that check. That's evolved into having an app where you can digitize it, but there's still steps needed. The world has quickly changed, and we're at a place where you know we we spend quite a bit of time talking to our corporate clients and then understanding their end consumers. 
the three most important things that we hear consistently from our from consumers they prioritize payouts they want choice so choice of how they want to receive the funds which kind of depends on the use case which we'll get into speed and then convenience so those are the top 3 and so some of the use cases you know Greg to your point receiving a rebate right receiving receiving rebate or cash back on something that's that's one for a good or service that was purchased receiving a refund so um refunds could be as ranging take an automotive use case you Greg are buying a new car and um you're turning your old vehicle in and you had one month back on your lease and you need to get those funds back Third could be a workforce payment. The world has moved into gig work pretty quickly. So you're a 1099 worker. You want to get paid and you want to be able to send money home. Um, how you receive that money, the ease at which you can then FX that. Those are all three, I think, three examples of payout use cases that happen at a key customer moment of truth. And um, there's an opportunity to, to get it really right and create a differentiated experience. Yeah, and I think when you think about what's possible, you look at how much technology has allowed. I think it's it's safe to say that pretty much every financial institution could be doing a better job here, uh, in, in at least some uh, some sense. And I don't discount the fact that there have been great strides made by a lot of financial institutions who've done a lot already, but there's still more to go. Um, another piece that I think is really crucial here is kind of talking through the link between. Uh, payments and the intelligence, under, sort of understanding your customers a little bit more. Can you talk through that link between kind of the intelligent digital services that you can offer, or at least start to suss out what you need to offer through the payments landscape? Yeah, and look, I'll I'll think about this in two specific areas, but all rooted around fundamentally what is the experience that banks, companies in general want to provide those recipients. So they're their clients, their consumers, their workers. And so you have an opportunity at a payout to be able to create a touch. So I'll, I'll give you, you know, let's let's stay on the auto example for a sec, the, the auto refund. You have an opportunity then to not only take what was previously a um, a very analog or even this paper check analog experience where you're simply as a consumer have to take a bunch of steps it's not convenient but also from a bank financial institution or client standpoint you're missing an opportunity to engage with that customer imagine a world in which you could in your brand surface up a page and say you can the consumer comes to a page on a mobile phone on an app right on their desktop where they're owed $500. They can choose how they want to get paid. You want it on a virtual card that can go right into your Apple, Google, Samsung wallet. Do you want it in your PayPal, Venmo account? Do you want it directly into your bank account? Right. So you can choose how you want to get paid. Um, that context-driven choice is going to depend because where someone puts a refund might be different than a $100 rebate, which is also going to be different than their payroll. So now you're creating this positive experience by empowering the consumer to choose how they want to get paid. So that's one on the front end. You're creating a great experience. The second piece on many of those workflows, on a check to stay on that example, once the check goes into an account, you don't know where that funds are spent. So let's say you select a virtual card, Greg, right? And that goes into your wallet. Of course, within the realm of privacy, now the bank has an opportunity in this case to understand where the money is being spent, um, at what amounts, where the physical location is, right? All of these great pieces so that fundamentally they can turn around and maybe partner with a retailer to present a better offer to that customer. So it, again, to give more value and consistently understand the needs and the wants of their customer and go back to, again, at a moment of truth, providing a great experience and delivering more value. Yeah, and certainly so much that we can learn from consumers based on their behavior. You know, I think the old adage, people vote with their wallets, right, at the end of the day. 
And if you yeah. can really look at where somebody is spending their money or what they're doing with money when they when they save it, you start to get a sense of what their priorities are. And you're able to do so much with that information, offer the right products at the right time, you know, develop deeper relationships with your customers, potentially find new lending opportunities. It really is a very powerful opportunity to understand what your customers are, are going to do, what they're looking to do. Um, and so let's let's talk about it a little bit now from the other side and from the consumer side, because obviously we talked about the consumer experience being paramount. What are consumers looking for right now that they're not, or, or maybe at least not all, getting? Uh, yep. So so harking back to this this. Um, Really, I mean, for a whole variety of reasons, some of which we're not going to cover on this podcast, but but a really interesting uh, moment in time that we're living in, at least from this this payments and fintech world. There's a, I think, a, an old adage that will ring true of meeting customers where they are, and what that means again in 2023 is um, you have some customers that still have a desire, you know, and and there's there's probably an alignment to demographics. That paper still feels safe and convenient, but where the world is rapidly gone and massively gone is the preference for digital. It's the preference for instant. It's the preference for now, now, now. So if you're a bank, if you're a fintech, if you're a market participant at large, the idea of meeting customers where they are is to provide them this continuum of choice of, of enabling them to be paid how they want to be paid right, in the modalities that they want and bringing them value on the back of those payments. So um, to be really specific, when we feel that this future of payment study that we've done every year, the, the top three ranked priorities for consumers on a scale of one to five, so choice, speed, and convenience. One, two, three. So they want choice. They want to be able to understand the options that they have to get paid. Probably, again, depends on the flow. Speed, they want it here and now. We live in a digital, instant, always on world. And then convenient. They want to make it simple. Like, make it easy for me. You know, we all have so many tools at our disposal. Consumers know this. So how do we create an easy experience? So I think all three of those point to... um, some clear direction for fintechs, banks, for for any company looking to engage with a consumer that probably extends beyond payments. Um, but look, like all things, right? Sometimes it's easy to say and harder to do. But yeah. you know, that's what consumers have told us. No, and I think that they've been very clear about that, right? This is not just in this area. This kind of extends well beyond this specific use case in banking in general, beyond you know, in broader. Uh, online interactions in general. These are very consistent with things that we've been aware of as an industry now for a long time. So um, I guess the next question is, you know, how does Onbi help? Um, and you can approach this either from kind of the customer side or from the, the bank, financial institution side, but but how is Onbi set up to be able to solve some of these challenges? Yeah, so so if you think about um, Onbi and this this platform that really makes it easy for for you know, large brands um, for software platforms and for banks to be able to offer modern payout options for their end recipients. Um, you know, we exist kind of right at this, the nexus of some of the trends that we've been talking about on this on this podcast. And so for us, we obsess over delivering these experiences um, and these recipient experiences on behalf of our clients and partners. So if you think about the brand Onbi, Onbi being short for on behalf, everything we do is on behalf of these, of, of our clients, um, of our banking partners. And so what we enable is this ability to not only relieve, um, you know, in, in this case, banks of the, the burden, so that cost, complexity, and risk of these, these payout programs that, are the orchestration of different payout modalities, integrations with IBRs and customer service, tie-ins to various payout and AP systems, right? So we manage all of that complexity, and then we turn around and give give those end consumers, those end clients, choice. And so, you know, we've um, we've kind of operated at a place in a time where we've continued to evolve, continue to add on more modalities um, and continue to add more context-driven choice while at the same time, just allowing those banks to be able to 
bring those whole disbursement opportunities to us and let us deal with that complexity. Yeah, and I think the complexity is a really crucial piece here because in order to make something look simple from the front end, the back end has to really be well thought out. And and this is one of those big challenges that uh, that, you know, consumers want it to be simple. They don't want to see the complexity, but obviously we are in a heavily regulated field. There's a lot of pieces that go into it. Um, and, and so the the size of the product on the back end, I think is something I would encourage anybody listening to um, go and learn more about what exactly does happen, because I think it's, it's a lot of work that goes into it. Now, we've got one time for one question left. And I want to end by zooming out and looking at you know the future of the payments landscape. I mean, we talked about how it's changed dramatically over the last couple of years. I think you know further change is imminent, right? We're certainly not at a status quo at this point. What do banks and fintechs need to be doing right now to prepare for the future? Uh, yeah, so number one, and I mean, this, this you know, rang true 100 years ago, and then I'll ring true 100 years from now, but under, understand your your consumers understand your compl- your your clients understand their um, their wants and needs. Uh, when we've done that, what we've consistently found is that we still live in a world where there is a there is a um, an orientation towards some of the analog tools. Right, we we all carry our physical wallets and our plastic, and we need to be able to continue to support that. But a massive move towards digital, instant, always on services and capabilities. And I think that the continuous move of, you know, not leaving some of your customers behind and still delivering on tried and true capabilities, but building for the world where the world is going, which is digital, it's instant, it's here now, um, is, is probably sage advice. And that could range from payments and payouts to other products and services that range far beyond financial services. Um, you know, I think we are still in the in the somewhat early innings of that and, and expect to see, you know, uh, similar to how the world looks very different today than it did three years ago, uh, expect to see the same thing in another three years from now. Yeah, we're clearly, again, in a moment of transformative change. And I think the, as they always say, you know, the fortune favors the bold, right? The, the people who take the steps now to get ready for the future are going to be in dramatically better position to be able to take advantage of some of these opportunities and to be able to offer their customers a better experience, get the intelligence that they need to, you know, proactively engage their customers in a more intelligent way. Um, there's so much at stake here. Um, and, and we could obviously keep talking about this for quite a while, but I, I'm afraid we do have to cut the episode here. Um, again, I've been talking to Kevin Brown, CMO and head of corporate development at Onbe, and would encourage anybody who is on site at Finnovate Fall next week to come and and connect with them or reach out and learn more. Um, It's a really fascinating platform. And Kevin, thanks again for your time. Thanks for having me. The Finnovate podcast is produced by Informa Connect in association with Provoke.fm Media. Check out Finnovate.com for information on Finnovate's upcoming shows and to learn how you can get involved. The discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on tickets to all of our events. And you can email us at info at for information on sponsoring, speaking, or demoing. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.